all right so finally nothing phone one on phone ops i'll tell you by the end of this video why this is a big deal this device has been out for more than a year and off lately i grabbed a lot of my attention especially after the launch of nothing phone 2 now apart from the glyph lights and the transparent backing the nothing phone one didn't really you know get my attention apart from the operating system the operating system was one of the reasons why i looked at the pixel 6 and pixel 7 but those devices cannot you know qualify to be my daily drivers but that's not what we are here today for since the time i got the nothing phone one used and i've been using it i did notice that nothing os 2.0.2 was unofficially released in the form of a beta for this wonderful device which brings the nothing phone one very close to the nothing phone 2. so i started working on this particular video what we did is we did a clean flash transferred all the data over from the gt neo 3t to the nothing phone one and since then benchmarks gaming camera charging everything has been tested i've ran across different communities asking for bugs and new features and i've made a complete list of things that you would want to know before you actually go ahead and install this rom or this particular update hello everyone my name is kalash and you're watching phone ops we find Finally, have the nothing phone one on our channel and we are working to get the nothing phone two as well so if you have any of these devices please subscribe share this video with all of your friends and family because no matter what android device they have sooner or later we're going to cover them so they will be excited to see such amazing content as well now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops let's get going Now first things first, let's actually go to the elephant in the room and address that elephant, right? Well, as you can see over here, this is nothing OS 2. So let's go to about over here. And over here, you will notice that it says nothing OS 2.0.2 and space war is what they have named it right now apart from this if you see over here this is of course powered by the snapdragon 778g plus excellent processor for mid-range devices you have all the other specifications mentioned over here but you will notice this is running android 13 with a august security patch so before we begin actually let's talk about the important stuff here now a lot of people have been stating that safety net fails in this particular update but for me I don't know what I did different. I just followed the steps. It shows that it is passing fine. And not only that, for me, Google Pay, Phone Pay, banking applications like HDFC's net banking app, all of them are working. So maybe, you know, it's just luck or something over here is right or wrong. Anyways, for me, banking applications are working fine, but most of you should know that this update can only be manually installed. Safety net is reported to be broken. So if you don't have safety net passing, you know, you might have issues with banking applications along with, uh, you know, media cons consumption apps like Netflix, Prime Video and stuff like that. Now, apart from this, if we look at Google Play Store certification, that is definitely a orange flag, not a red one, because device certification over here is definitely not present now that was everything about the initial warnings but what is new and what all have i experienced well there's a whole lot and this is going to be a long one so sit tight and grab your coffee now let's get started with the very very basic stuff right so if you see the torch icon over here if i just press it on you will notice that over here you get the torch but if i turn it off and if i long press it you now have a shortcut for glyph so as you, as you can see, torch and long press, you get the glyph torch. So this is a feature that is added in this particular update. Secondly, as you can already see, we have a brand new home screen layout from nothing phone 2 or nothing OS 2. And it looks very, very nice. There are a lot of things that are available over here. First of all, you can see this Google folder. The animation is absolutely brilliant. It works really, really well. If you long press it, you can go ahead and rename it. If you customize it, there are different sort of shapes and covers and stuff like that you can have. And you can select what cover you want. You can even select a emoji as a cover. I like the circle one over here, but this second circle one is pretty neat as well. So that is one thing. Apart from this, you can see that if you long tap on an app you directly have shortcuts for that particular application and if you long press on the folder you can actually minimize or enlarge the folder which makes your life that much easy now apart from this if you long press on a widget you know you have widget settings and option to remove the widgets but if you long press on an app you have certain app related settings including notifications and 
opening the application or adding a bigger widget for example let's drag down the play store here as you can see the play store icon enlarged itself and you can also go ahead and minimize it so those are small small things you know but they absolutely make a difference to the way you interact with the user interface to the left of course you have google feed which works smooth as ever no problems there the experience in the entire user interface for me has been very cohesive very smooth in fact the app icon animations are pretty Pretty beautiful and this is you know one of the most beautiful Android experiences I've had it used to be oxygen OS or pure Google you know pure Google is still one of my favorite but with such light customization I really really like what I see now if we then go to the quick tiles over here as you can see we still have the black colored layout following stock Android but you now have separate icons for you know Wi-Fi and mobile data over here at the same time you have separate icons for Bluetooth connected devices and Bluetooth settings that's really really neat if you long press over here you're directly taken to that menu that is nothing new that is standard android 13 stuff and as you can see all the other quick tiles are available some additional quick tiles are there but more or less they are pretty much the same to what it was in nothing os 1.5.6 now that's everything about the home screen but what about the launcher so before the launcher you have widgets over here so if you go to widgets over here you will notice that everything is pretty much similar but if you go to the nothing widgets you can see that you have these clock styles which can be added to the home screen and then you have quick tiles which can be added as widgets as well for example you have this auto rotate option over here you can go ahead and place it on the home screen you can select what sort of quick tile you want to add to the home screen that is really really convenient even live caption calculator security privacy all the other apps that support a quick tile are available over here and that makes your life much much easy now in the launcher settings you don't really have any new features it's pretty basic stuff but if we actually go to the wallpaper settings in customization you will notice that you have a bunch of new wallpapers by nothing and they look really really nice and they work pretty well as well now next up we have something very interesting for which we're going to lock the device because you can see this beautiful always on display and you can now add up to eight shortcuts on the lock screen and they are actionable what this means is if i tap on the torch button while it is activated it will reflect as red and without unlocking the device i can turn it off for hotspot as well i can enable it and for other settings i can directly go to the calculator or relevant applications so the lock screen looks much more mature and much more customizable now let me actually take you to the lock screen customization menu so once we go to settings over here and lock screen as you can see you have lock screen widgets so you can customize what type of widgets do you want you have eight options over here but if you choose a bigger widget it will take space for two or four widgets or even six for that matter but the amount of options that you have over here are pretty amazing you can even add quick tiles as i shown you on the lock screen now you have a new ui for lock screen shortcut over here as you can see and you can enable or disable if you want these options to be available on a lock screen or not the volume sliders have gotten up update as well so if you were to increase or decrease the volume as you can see now they are dotted instead of a straight line the same thing goes on for the brightness slider as well these are dotted lines instead of a straight line so that's another ui element from nothing os2 another neat addition over here is the nothing icon pack which is now pre-installed you can choose to have colored icons just like google does but you can choose the nothing icon pack out of the box it doesn't support all the icons so you're gonna have to update it and if you don't see an update on the play store you can manually install the apk which is linked in the description but this particular icon pack with the whole nothing os 2.0 look looks really really nice and it works brilliantly now next up let's actually talk about settings the settings page is slightly updated now major changes over here but you get network and internet as a big tile over here and connected devices so that's what they are emphasis on now something that is unique for the nothing phone one and two hardware wise is the glyph interface and that ui is definitely received an update in this particular software update as you can see you have three brightness options available over here for the brightness of your glyph lights you can go ahead and you know select the glyph ringtones which was available earlier as well you can select the one for notifications too but apart from this you can enable or disable the glyph lights and flip to glyph you now have a brand new 
composer for your glyph light ringtones and you can go ahead and make your own as you can see you just have to install this app from the play store and once you've installed it you can com compose and share it with your friends and with the community as well now apart from this you do have charging meter google assistant bedtime schedule things like uber or swiggy zomato those features which were available in nothing phone 2 are exclusive to that device because that is a hardware requirement for that reason that feature is not available over here and i doubt if someone tries to port it it might or might not work but the glyph interface is definitely updated and it looks absolutely brilliant another thing that is updated in nothing os 2.0.2 is the camera section this app is now slightly redesigned and looks much more cleaner the camera app functions work absolutely fine the only small bug that i notice is when you're taking a portrait selfie if you have more than one person in that particular selfie it will blur out either one of the persons or both of them now that is definitely a bug so unless you want a lot of portrait selfies this is not a big big problem now let's talk about the ui experience as i mentioned earlier the smoothness in the ui is absolutely brilliant no problems whatsoever all the apps open and close seamlessly and the multitasking menu works beautifully as well ram management is on point and we will talk about battery life and charging so earlier there was a bug wherein whatsapp or any social media apps notifications would be delayed that is definitely fixed even if we you know go to the battery section over here you do have this option of sleep standby optimization even with this enabled even when the device was not used for one or two hours i did get my whatsapp notifications and that in my opinion is a very very good improvement and as you might have already seen fingerprint unlock face unlock these features are working absolutely fine i've not had any problems with the fingerprint scanner or the face unlock now let's talk about network wi-fi 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz all of them are working absolutely okay i do have 5g on airtel and geo i've tested both of the sim cards most of the locations i was able to get good 5g coverage voice calls were working absolutely fine i did not try you know video calls on lte or video calls on 5g and stuff like that but most of the times internet and connectivity wi-fi connectivity voice over wi-fi all of the features worked exceptionally well now talking about 5g let me tell you that i did not notice any overheating of the device even when downloading files which are 4 to 5 gigabytes so yes 5g optimization is present and works well even network switching is doing a great job the signal bars are indicating how the network should be all in all network and connectivity which is a big big question mark for me on any update to be used as daily is a go go so you can definitely try it now stock android's game dashboard is present but with that nothing have added their own game mode they managed to add a few more features that is the game list management notification display type apart from that you have missed touch prevention and you can directly go to the game dashboard from here so you can have google's game dashboard even in benchmark applications let me show you here i've gone ahead and added all the benchmark apps as you can see and we've ran the benchmarks and games after adding it to the game dashboard now within the os itself you can now lock and clone the applications which is a good thing so i've not had any problems locking or cloning the applications as you can see over here i've enabled and disabled them and even if you go to see other apps you can clone just like xiaomi devices almost any application you can lock almost any application as well now as you can see this was my first charge cycle from 100 to zero we were at five percent and it says it'll last for an hour and 18 minutes but apart from this let me actually show you here we use the screen for three hours but we were on battery for more than 24 hours and in this time we have had calls for two hours and 15 minutes we've used youtube for almost six to seven hours but not actively on screen for other things as well nothing launcher has taken up some battery and apart from that these are the other things that have taken up other battery info as well so all in all if you ask me about the battery backup on this particular device for 4500 milliamp hours you can easily go through a day even through medium heavy usage because it is giving good optimization now as far as charging is concerned it did take one hour five minutes to charge from five to a hundred percent let's actually see what accu battery has to say here now as far as charging is concerned as you can see five percent to 89 percent took one hour 11 minutes which is pretty common as far as 33 watt charging is concerned we use the original mi 33 watt charger and the original cable so in about one hour 20 minutes you should have a full charge from zero to a hundred percent now as far as benchmarks are concerned in antutu benchmark i managed to get 589 655 the temperature increased by six degrees celsius and the percentage of battery dropped by 
At the same time, we did try the CPU throttle test and somehow I was disappointed there because I don't know what happened with the system. It dropped once and it stayed there, which means the CPU throttled to 75% of its max performance and the average score was 175 209 GIPS. Now, don't get me wrong, but I'm new to this device. This is just like the third or fourth day and we are doing a complete review. Maybe after I use it for a week or two weeks on different ROMs, I can get a gist of what actually benchmark numbers mean on this particular device. As far as Geekbench is concerned, 1058 single core and 3030 multi core. So all in all performance is pretty decent. I tried gaming and in BGMI, you can get smooth extreme and in HDR, you can go up to ultra. For 30 to 45 minutes of gaming, I did not notice any major lags or overheating. There's definitely a gaming review coming on this particular OS update very, very soon. Last but not the least, you might be wondering how to install this and I'm not going to make a separate video. All you need to do is you just need to, you know, go ahead and grab your favorite file manager, go to the internal storage and click the three dots and select add new folder just like I have done over here and the folder would be named OTA in lowercase. Download the file linked in the description and just place it in that particular folder. Now once that is done, you just need to dial a code star hash star hash 682 hash star hash star and it will be taking you to this particular menu over here you can select directly apply OTA from select because it will automatically detect the update in that particular folder and it will allow you to reboot and in my opinion you should back up all your data and do a factory reset because this is sort of a major update but if you don't wish to and you don't have any problems using the operating system you should be doing just fine now what about the conclusion you ask i think this is definitely a daily driver it will allow you to get a good experience almost all the features of nothing phone 2 minus the hardware that cannot be replaced but yes nothing os2 is one of my favorite operating systems out there which are based on pure android it works flawless gives you a good experience and i like the camera style on this device as well that's it from this review let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video i'll see you in the next one Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.